Hi, good evening. Um, I was brought up watching uh, Partick Thistle, so I'm not used to big crowds. <laughs> <laughs> It's a tremendous turnout, it's excellent. I've done, um, this is the third meeting I've done in about a week and the other two were also overflowing so it just shows you with six months to go how much um, interest there is in the campaign. Um, I just want to talk first of all a wee bit about why I'm here. Um, I'm a businessman, I've been doing my own business for about nine or ten years now, before that I worked for different companies um, and I've got businesses I've built up over that time based in Scotland, England and, uh, and in Europe. Um, and about a year and a half ago, when the referendum became a live issue, I started to think, well, I should really have a look at this and understand what are the issues around about the referendum and uh, how would it affect me, how would it affect my businesses. So I went and had a look at the, the background information, cut through the spin, went to the, the core numbers, and the way I would do if I was looking at a business, if I was looking to invest in a business or buy a business, if Scotland PLC would it, as a business, be worth investing in. So I went and had a look at the, 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 the raw data and, and tried to analyse and understand it in, in that sense. And what I found surprised me, um, first of all, I mean, Annabelle's talked about 2WE, and it's absolutely right. If you look at the nearly 200 countries in the UN, there's about just over 100 are bigger than Scotland and, and about 80 or 90 are smaller than Scotland. So we're, we're right in the middle. And then same in Europe, about half the countries in Europe are, uh, are smaller or the same size in Scotland. So we're not 2WE two, two as, as a 5 million plus um, population. And in terms of too poor, um, again, what, what I found surprised me when you look at the numbers, outside of, uh, outside of London in the southeast, this is the richest part of the UK in terms of the wealth it generates. Uh, we generate significantly more tax per person in Scotland than the UK average and have done right since the, the data we started being collected 30 odd years ago. Um, in actual fact, it's quite fortunate we've got one of the, one of the Business for Scotland charts up here. This is. Um, I don't know if you can see that, the green shows you where the, um, the highest areas of GDP generated, uh, or wealth generated, tax generated in the UK, and uh, the red shows the, um, the wealthiest uh, households in the UK. So it kind of shows you the paradox of why, although Scotland is the, the second uh, richest part of the UK in terms of the tax it generates, it doesn't feel like that when you, when you walk about and, and, and look at Scotland um, as a country, because for, for decades that wealth has been largely... Uh, largely flowing south. Um, so yeah, so what I found was that Scotland a strong economy and a very diverse economy, not just oil, lots of other different sectors that, that, uh, that play a part in a very, a very strong and diverse economy. Um, and that was something that the Standard & Poor's report that came out the other week said, said that oil at 16% is not an issue that they consider in terms of concentration, it's far from that. Norway, for example, has got an oil sector that, that, that's, that's nearly 30% of its economy and obviously it hasn't, um, hasn't done them any harm. So then what happened was um, I, I went to a, a couple of meetings and started to get involved with, uh, with Business for Scotland, um, which was a group of business people who had kind of come to the same conclusion as me. Uh, and I like to say I kind of put my, my toe in the water and before long I was swimming about with the sharks as uh, <laughs> I seen on, the, on the telly one or two times. So um, and it was kind of interesting because then another area opens up of, of kind of thought and you, and, and you realise, well, the concept of Scotland as an independent country is something that changed for business people, entrepreneurs in particular, who've gone through the process of um, starting up their own business, had people say you can't do it, you're not clever enough, that'll never work, nobody will ever work with you, you can't set your own company up, you can't run it, you'll never be successful. So, gone through that process, had faith in themselves to make it work, understand what it's like to stand on your own two feet, make your own decisions, in short, understand the difference between dependence and independence. And I think that's a big part of the reason why um, Business for Scotland is, uh, is, is chained with a lot of business people. Um, and, and there's a range, there, there, there's people there that are, that are one man bands, one woman bands um, on the high street doing whatever they're doing, right up to uh, many people in Business for Scotland that employ thousands of people in their businesses and everything in between. So it's quite a wide range of, uh, of business interests and we're growing, we're now up to 1,600 members um, in Business for Scotland growing, growing every day. Um, and, and it was interesting, some of Patrick's comments, we've got a declaration on our, on our website and it talks about a more prosperous Scotland, but it also talks about a fairer Scotland and a greener Scotland, because we, we, members of Business for Scotland recognise that those issues are, are all, uh, all equally important um, for Scotland uh, in the future. And just take it a minute for the plug, we've got Alan Nicholson at the back somewhere, who's our local Business for Scotland guy, so if anybody is in business, is interested in Business for Scotland, you can, uh, you can talk to Alan at the end and he'll... Uh, He'll uh, engage you in um, the, the local activities or trying to get going because we've got business for Scotland groups going all around the country now 
We've got about eight or nine of them. We're sitting up all the time and holding local, uh, local monthly events focused on business issues. So um, you, you, you please get involved if, uh, if, if that's, your, uh, that's your background. Um, I want to go and talk a wee bit um, to finish up about um, <coughs> some of the issues that Scotland's got in its favour. Because I think over the decades, people have come to believe that Scotland's got um, were kind of the, um, a lot of challenges and not a lot of opportunities, but we're, we're not blessed with very much in the way of uh, things that could make us successful. And I just want to give a, a, a couple of examples of that. And the first one's really a story about um, one of our near neighbours, Norway. And it's about the, uh, the Prime Minister of Norway who was walking along the field one day and he sees uh, the magic lamp and he picks it up and gives it a rub. And the genie pops out and the genie says, Tom, I'd like to give you uh, a number of wishes to make Norway a better country. He says, well, that's, that's difficult. We're, we're one of the richest countries in the world. We're one of the happiest countries in the world. We've got the, the, one of the most equal societies. We've got um, everybody, one of the best health indicators in the world. It's very difficult to think of anything that would, that would make us a better country. And he says, well, we'll think about some things. He says, okay, I, I've got a few. He said, we've got an economy that's built on offshore and it's built on fisheries. But it'd be nice to have something more diverse than that. Um, for example, we've got this national drink called Aquavit that nobody's ever heard of and, and nobody knows what it is. It'd be really good if, if everybody all around the world had heard of that. People from Shanghai to Singapore would pay stupid money to take this off our hands and, and it was only as they could make it. He says, yeah, yeah we, can, we can do that. He's, we speak Norwegian, which is a kind of, nobody else speaks it. We need to learn another language if we want to do business with anybody or even go on holiday. It's a nightmare. How about you make everybody in, in the world speak Norwegian as a first language for business and <laughs> airline pilots need to speak Norwegian to each other everywhere we go around the world, etc, etc. That would make business a lot easier. So yeah, we can do that. So, um, we're a long way from our, our uh, main markets here. We've got to go through two other countries to get to the main, main, main customer markets. It's difficult. How about you, you get a big country of 60 million people and put it on a southern border, just over the border for us, all want to buy our energy and our drink and everything. And they'll speak Norwegian, of course, to make it easy for us. They said that our geography is a nightmare. It's a huge country um, for 5 million people. The, the weather's horrible. It's minus 35 in the winter. We've got snow clouds in six months of the year. How about you make it a quarter of the size with the same amount of resources and the same population uh, in a nice temperate climate all the year round? So yeah, yeah, we can probably manage that as well. So, how about you give us five of the top 200 universities in the world? And give us an industrial heritage back 150 years so that when we, we travel around the world, everybody's heard of our inventions and our inventor, inventors and our engineers. Um, and, um, and how about you give us, um, our, our national brand's not great. Um, how about you give us um, a national dress that everybody recognises and a national poet that everybody celebrates all the year round? Right? And a diaspora of tens of millions of people all around the world that wish us well and want us to exceed in the world. They say, Jerry, we can probably manage all of that. So, I mean, you actually go through the list, it's quite amazing the strengths that Scotland's got. And just to kind of finish off, there was, a, there was an article on that theme um, a couple of months ago, I think it was in the Independent, and a guy basically written and said, if you look at all the successful countries in the world, they've got three factors in common. Um, or there are three factors that influence them. Um, some have only got one of them, some have got two of them, but none have got three. Um, and the three factors are they're all kind of smallish countries of about five million people. If you look at Denmark, Finland, rich countries, but they've not got any in the way in actual resources or, or anything compared to what we've got. There's other countries of that kind of size but are very successful because they've got a strong heritage in financial services, for example, Singapore or Switzerland. Um, and there's other countries of that kind of size that are wealthy because they've got natural resources, for example, Norway. But there isn't a single country in the world that's got all three, apart from Scotland. <laughs> so um, it's, um, it's a serious point and it's absolutely true. The future's there for us to make what we want of it and the first step to that is uh, to vote yes and then it's only, uh, uh, only going forward from there on. Thanks very much.